Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for Wednesday, May 15th, 2013. Our top story comes from the world of biotechnology. Here on Brainstorm, we've talked about artificial photosynthesis, usually described as splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen using sunlight. This is a good idea, but plants are already so good at photosynthesis after billions of years of evolution, so why not just use them? That's exactly what some researchers at the University of Georgia have been working on, with promising results. Conventional silicon-based solar panels hover around 12 to 15 percent efficient, whereas photosynthesis is nearly 100 percent efficient for the range of light absorbed. Unlike the artificial process we mentioned, the primary goal of photosynthesis isn't producing hydrogen, although water splitting does happen but most of the energy is in the free electrons produced. What the researchers attempted to do was essentially hijack these electrons. Inside all plants and algae, photosynthesis happens in the chloroplast, and the light-dependent reaction happens within inner structures called thylakoids. By isolating and modifying thylakoids, the researchers were able to disrupt the normal metabolic pathway and connect the structures to carbon nanotubes. This system was then able to conduct the electrons from a photosynthesis reaction to a wire, producing power. Right now, the output isn't very high, but the technology is very new. But this system is still twice as efficient as similar designs, and with further development, it could be extremely productive, especially if they use genetic engineering and other technologies to stabilize the thylakoids, bringing biological efficiency to solar power. Next is an update from the world of medicine. As we've discussed before, humans and mammals in general kind of suck at regeneration. But we are especially terrible at regenerating neurons and nerve fibers. Which is why nerve damage is so hard to recover from and often results in some kind of permanent effect. Fortunately, some scientists from Tel Aviv University have developed a gel that could help regenerate nerves. The idea is that a biodegradable tube lined with this gel would be implanted to help reconnect two ends of a severed nerve. The gel has three main components, antioxidants to reduce inflammation around the damage, a peptide that helps guide the nerve endings, and hyaluronic acid to prevent the gel from drying. So far, it's only been tested in animal models but has worked. And the gel itself can be used alone to assist in the growth and transport of nerve cells used in other kinds of regenerative therapies. But if the tube implant works in humans, it could greatly improve the lives of those suffering from chronic pain, fatigue, and paralysis due to nerve damage. We end with exciting news from the world of biology. Malaria is a devastating disease affecting millions of people in parts of Africa, Asia, and around the world. It's caused by a protozoan parasite and is primarily transmitted through mosquitoes. Some groups have attempted to stop the spread of this disease by directly interfering with the mosquitoes themselves. So one group, funded by the National Institute of Health, is attempting to fight fire with fire, in that they established a bacterial infection in a mosquito population that seems to make them immune to the malaria-causing parasite. Called Wolbachia, it's a relatively common bacteria that infects insects, but not humans. And it doesn't seem to hamper the mosquitoes very much either. What it does do is prevent malaria from growing inside the mosquitoes. The group isn't entirely sure why this all happened, but they hypothesized that the bacteria is producing reactive oxygen species as a waste product, which the malaria parasite can't handle. Infecting embryos and raising them to maturity created a heritable infection of the Wolbachia bacteria passed down from mother to offspring. It was passed down for 34 successive generations until the study ended, and another experiment introduced different amounts of infected females into a normal population. Starting with as little as 5%, the entire population was in carrying the bacteria within eight generations. This same bacteria has also been used to limit the spread of the dengue virus, also mosquito-transmitted. And their hope is to incorporate this into other malaria-fighting strategies. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. In what creative way would you fight the spread of malaria? Let us know your thoughts on that and all the stories in the comments.